Travel with me, my fellow gamers, to the end zones, distant places like the sweltering desert or the freezing north, and we will enjoy a dozen new stories with fresh characters and a number of tasty fruits. These will become our new super crops with massive food yields, we will bring back new technologies to upgrade our settlement across the board, and even add new decorations to stand as monuments to these great adventures. And such amazing adventures these 12 new expeditions are. Each is divided into 3 chapters at each point of the compass. To the north we have our familiar trader characters as we help them uncover a massive refuge one snow layer at a time. Far to the east we meet our first new character living alone on a submarine island base inventing and tinkering with machines. At the wild west a whole community lives on the move and rides the rails running from their past and into new troubles. In the south a group of very young survivors calls for help as they try to navigate the high seas on a ship they don't know how to operate. If I have tickled your imagination enough do jump right into the description and follow the links to the game's store page while I tell you more about it all. This isn't your usual additional content DLC as you might expect to see in games of this city building and survival management genre. As much as Endzone reminds of Banished and Surviving the Aftermath, this content is closer to Frostpunk's additional story scenarios. With the Endzone's overall harder and more attention demanding gameplay of keeping everything balanced, supplied and running, this DLC and its 12 scenarios come as quite a different type of gameplay, expanding on the local map expedition gameplay and taking you far from home. But to even get to this point, you have to actually research the required tech for building your own hot air balloon station. This requires 3 research utensils, 3 knowledge points and quite a few basic resources. The other 4 new techs are not researchable but gained by getting to the end of each of the 4 expansion scenarios. We will talk more about them a bit later. Once you actually build the balloon station you get to check out the SOS and similar radio calls coming in from distant places. Hello. Do I have a connection? Or has the stupid antenna shifted out of place again? Hello? This is an SOS. We're on a ship off the coast. I repeat, if anyone can hear us, we've gotten stuck en route and have some problems. Ubisoft and sends you greetings from afar. I was quite pleasantly surprised that the indie team of developers from Gently Mad Studios actually went all out and added full voiceovers for all the NPC characters you meet on these expeditions. This is a really rare feature in this type of a game and it's no wonder this game gets nominated and wins awards. After choosing the direction to which you will head for your first expedition, picking the right settlers and their gear, you will have to wait a while for the necessary supplies to be loaded and for the settlers to assemble and equip themselves for the journey. Do make sure to pack lots of rations as your explorers will have many events to solve and once the balloon goes up and travels off the map it takes quite a bit of time for them to return. Get me? And if I'd left, someone else might have grabbed this wonderful building for themselves. I would never have forgiven myself for that. You can solve a whole chapter in one go, but as I said, you gotta bring a lot of supplies with you. Thank God, somebody tracked our radio message. We tried so often, we got to the point where we didn't believe that anyone was going to come anymore. Each of the first chapters at every destination will be an introduction of sorts to old and new characters and their stories, but there will be lots of work for your settlers to do and there is potential to bring back many supplies. These will come in handy both for future expeditions and for growing your settlement if you are playing on a new save along with the distant places. If you are totally new by any chance, I advise playing the excellent tutorials first as they will help you greatly to skip the major pitfalls which vex all new players. For more help you can also watch my how to start guide linked up here and down in the description. As the expedition to the frozen north is played alongside already familiar trader characters I will take you to my favorite journey to the southern seas and the huge ship full of hungry, thirsty and sick teenagers and kids. Stop! Not one step further! What are you doing on this ship? Are you here because of the SOS? 
How did they end up all alone, what happened to their parents and who is even navigating their ship's path are all questions you will find answers to as you help the little ones with their major and minor issues and problems. To keep the video mostly spoiler free, I won't show you or go into too many details as this and all the other three stories are best experienced firsthand. I for one had a wonderful time with all three chapters as I came to the ship each time to find the kids with different problems my settlers could help them with. On my second journey to their ship I found them run aground at an island where I actually picked up the seeds for coconut trees. These and all the other new food crops like bananas, pineapples and watermelons as well as sunflower and physalis plants are found during these expeditions. Some are gained as presents, others found by sheer chance like these coconuts and each is behind a chapter of one of the stories. They all grow slowly but produce a lot of food for your settlement and have very nice looks bringing some exotic feel to your more humble assortment of plants and food bearing trees. Console players of the end zone, a world apart, survivor edition, which is already available on the PlayStation and Xbox, should note they do not have these fruits or other content additions from the Distant Places DLC, as it is not yet available for their version, which includes the base game experience and the first DLC Prosperity, which I will cover in another video. On the bright side, the console edition did get a full UI and controls overhaul with even some exclusive missions. At the end of the third chapter with Leela and her crew of kids, we say goodbye and fly back with the blueprints for the new tech called improved power systems. This upgrades the electricity production for all buildings while also increasing the capacity for electricity storage inside batteries. The other techs upgrade your building's durability, reduce food production resource requirements, increase warehouse capacity and reduce trader prices. On the topic of trade, all the characters you meet and help out on your expeditions will stay in touch and you will have new trading opportunities with them using the balloon station. Trading with one does reset the cooldown for all, but they have lots of different trade offers which change so you might get new knowledge points, different resources or even some of the more advanced stuff. After you successfully finish the third chapter of any expedition, you unlock a special new decoration to mark the occasion. These don't cost much and do raise the appeal of surrounding space just like other decorations. Each one is unique and a cool representation of what you saw and did during your expeditions to distant places. I had a blast and considered this an amazing way for developers to extend their city building and survival gameplay with fresh stories and adventures for their players. The price tag is well matched to the amount of content and well worth it in my opinion, especially if you enjoy Endzone's expedition mechanics, take into consideration the voice acting and the super fruits. Do let me know down in the comments which story or new character you found most interesting and while you're there, please support me by using the like and subscribe buttons. There are also links to the game itself and more of my videos for you to enjoy. Thank you for watching and happy gaming.